Gravel race, on average, how long? Tire pressures, how many of them? What time does a gravel race start in the morning? Any kind of support on route? Do you run a power meter? Lean the bike or lean the person? Or would you say the majority of gravel competitions are about competing or completing? I reckon that's it. I reckon that's all I got. Good morning. It's a uh, it's cold. It's not that cold actually. It's not. Here's Nathan Peter Hart. Hello. <laughs> that was a, can we do that again? Good morning. Welcome to the channel. We're gonna go for my first ever gravel ride. Literally first ever gravel ride. This isn't constructed. This has been in the making for a while. And you know, because I am a recently retired professional, as is this guy. So you think, <laughs> yeah, I'm not into shot. Then. Like I'm just like, it's like I'm a retired professional. Here's does my that, team. But does and that still like, make you, are you a retired professional? Are you only a professional when you're... No, right, because you're paid to like, ride a bike do, do you all of a sudden just become like a retired ex-cyclist? I think we're ex-world tour. Ex-world, that's Let's call ourselves. We're, we're, we're still professional cyclists in the technical sense, but ex-world tour. We're going to go gravel riding. Nathan's going to show me the ropes. I have zero experience, so I bought my aero shoes. Which is very important. Aero is everything in gravel, <laughs> as you can see. As I've heard. <laughs> and we got, uh, we've got cameras, we've got a, a to-be-cleaned bike, and yes. <laughs> we're good to go. My experience with gravel is, yeah, precisely zero. Done some mountain biking, kind of badly. Actually, I've put the mountain biking together in We have video. in Lavinia, that was good. Yeah, that until was you fun. had a massive crash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, was it me that crashed? Yeah, I like it. Either. It was me let's, that crashed. Let's hope yeah. that doesn't happen today. No, let's hope that, yeah. But, did do Strada Bianchi, and I finished it. That's, that's not nothing. My impression of that, because we were on road tires, was the, the gravel bit was just like, send it and hope for the best. Yeah, I think actually when it comes down to it, it's like if you're on a wheel, yeah. You just don't touch your brakes and as long as the guy in front doesn't crash. Yeah. Maybe you won't. Yeah, that happened to me. That was nibbly. Mm. What a prick. What a prick. <laughs> well, he's doing gravel next year. Ah, the biggest burden that race was actually a temperature. It was the 38 degree one oh, in 2020. Oh, you did the big bang, bang a hot one. Mm. Yeah. That did look... Yeah. That looked better from the TV, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> My team was like, Alex, you're riding for Chris. Alex. Chris is out. Actually, everyone's out. You're the only one left in the race. Oh, wait, you're the only one left? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Team Israel, <Yay>. what's up? <laughs> Without further ado, we're going we're gonna to get rolling and we're going to talk about the bike. I'm on a Ridley. Which was graciously given to us for the day by Eat Sleep Cycle yep. in Girona. Thank arguably the best bike shop in Spain. Arguably. So let's get rolling. Yeah. The bottom of the downhill is a steep right. Yeah. So already going to an easy gear once you hit the gravel. It was good fun. It was good fun. I get it. I, I understand the I understand the appeal of gravel. That didn't take long. <laughs> I thought we were going to get to the end of the day and you'd come to this. Well, I can maybe see your perspective. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, in the same way, I started skiing, and after a day or two, I was like, "Yeah, I get it. This has been after 13 minutes, or I don't know, 40 minutes. What have we done?" Yeah, for, we've done 40 minutes. 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, I get it. I understand. Off the beaten track, pretty much the same workout you get as a road ride. Probably harder. It's much talkier than I. I envisage gravel to be a off-road road ride but it isn't no there's there's literally no easy pedaling in gravel it's like as long as you're pedaling there's just a certain amount of like load on the body yeah. and it's like you have to have so much core strength as well like upper body has to stay stable so it's at every point like you're just focusing on the gravel bike but for me the other thing is it just makes time go really really fast like if, yeah. if i have like a four hour endurance ride I, I used to always just go out on my cyclocross or gravel bike because like it just it's just way more entertaining if you don't have like specific efforts because it's just we've done 42 minutes and you thought it was 14. Yeah, exactly. I was just thought, yeah, my watch was this speed, but 14 kilometers an hour. No, I, I do. 
they understand this. And I think we are blessed with what probably one of the best gravel environments there is. Yeah, I, th I, I think Girona might be the gravel capital of the world that I've managed to see so yeah. far. It's just you're it's quite just, well versed just, in. It's endless. Yeah, it's just actually endless. And like I still I still go down trails and I'm like. I've never done this one before and it's that happens probably every second ride I'm finding new trails new roads yeah. that connect things up and that's not even looking on like you know Strava heat maps or anything it's just like you just you get like a nose for gravel and you're like oh, that looks like it could connect up to something pretty good and sometimes you end up doing some hiker bike which we're not going to do today no 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 because I've got a funny knee and also you're on speed play road pedals which is well because I've got my aero shoes <laughs> you just you know I, I did I did concede and not bring the aero pedals as well because I thought you know I might need to clip in both sides of the both sides of the pedal we're going to get the drone up the problem with the drone is someone has to fly it and could you could you fly it on the bike like wearing those big goggles to, like, trying to do everything at the same time oh <laughs> uh, well no <laughs> no damn it I, I've got like an FPV thing I need to get a uh, one that's uh, that has the active track. It can follow you. It's very cinematic. Harry Sweeney, I think it's yeah. Harry Sweeney uses them on his YouTube channel. It's very good. So I'm going to follow you for a bit with the drone, not with my bike. Fun. I'm going to have a little, just a little sit down on the on this. Fine, <laughs> fine. Bit of a kip. Gravel. We should have brought the flask with some tea and some bickies. That would have been. That would have been. Is class. that the spirit of gravel? Tea and bickies. Yeah. I thought it was beers and. Well, I mean, burgers. it's still before twelve. I don't think you can have a beer uh, quite before. We've got 12. thirteen minutes. Thirteen yeah. minutes and until it's, it's beer. And then we don't even have to say it's twelve o'clock somewhere. Yeah. It'll be twelve o'clock here. <laughs> <laughs> So here we are, we are about an hour into the ride now and it does not feel like it because it's been like ah! the whole time. Well not the whole time, it's just been real pleasant. Good chats, good uh, trails? What do you call them? Grudes. First impressions of the bike. It's bouncy, it's floaty, I feel like I'm floating. It feels like, I'm like just... you're on a road bike and you've got a suspiciously perhaps flat tire all day. Yeah but not in a bad way. So you, you don't have that like, oh, it's about to roll off the rim. So as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by a technical downhill, um, the bike, yeah, floaty. I feel like I'm riding on on air, but more so than those solid road tires that we use. It's a more relaxed position and just weird not, I mean, I've ridden one by plenty of times on a TT bike, but not actually having a physical shifter to play with on my left hand is very, very strange as well. But so far, I, I, like I said, I really, I, I get this. I get this a lot. And we were saying before, like we're, today we're almost doing like urban gravel. We're doing just the gravel just behind like the parts of, the area that people live. We haven't even hit like, you know, the big mountains or like the big, big, big sort of passes into the national forest or down to the coast. So today's, it's it's not like baby gravel. We're definitely doing some technical stuff, but like this is just Alex's first, first little toe in the water. And I'm nursing a little bit of a knee ski injury. So uh, we're also going easy on me in the words of Adele. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. It's about beer o'clock, don't you say? The other aspect to gravel that I was enticed by is, I've been told, there's beer involved. I also need to have something to eat. Oh, it's warmer than I thought. Another aspect to gravel. Well, not to all road riders, but certainly to me, to you. Love the cafe stop as a road rider? 
lived for the cafe stuff. Yeah, so it was, yeah. It, it, it was sometimes the only thing that could actually convince me to go yeah. on a six hour ride. I was like, I know this cafe three hours away. <laughs> I had a coach that was like, no cafe stops because it's not an endurance ride if you cafe stuff. I, I was like, was that Kevin? It was Kevin, yeah. yeah. I had the same beef with Kevin. I was like, no, 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 no. no. If you want me to get past me with any motivation, <laughs> Tag in some cafe stops, bro. <laughs> anyway, so we, we've stopped. There's been one beer, two beer, so one each, some water. So actually, Kevin, massive sandwich. Kevin, theoretically, we didn't actually have a cafe stop. Yeah, <laughs> we had a beer stop. And you never <laughs> said you didn't, couldn't have one of them. <laughs> loopholes. Life's all about loopholes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, look, full custom kit. Just this is beautiful. Matches the bike as well. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. And um, you got a like, pretty sick setup with Colnago and Campagnolo, hey, and Castelli. Castelli. Physique. Physique, cask. Is there anyone that isn't Italian? Garmin. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a fun project putting it all together. It's really nice seeing how the industry is like fully rallying around this new sport of gravel. For sure, for the industry, it's you know it's a financial thing, but at the same time, it's it's just really cool that this new sport's got so much support to grow and and do super cool things, but also do it in the right way. You know. We can make it look fun. We can make it look encouraging for people to just come and try try the sport because you know I, I don't want everyone to come and race because you know there's already enough guys beating me. But I just like getting people out on bikes, and I think gravel for me is just it's a very special way to go and spend a day. I think you know beating you. That's, that's I'm not going to say that's not fair, but. The thing is with gravel, you've got such a good excuse. Like if you get beaten, you just be like, yeah, well, I'm here for the spirit of gravel. Yeah, you know, it's very ethereal. You know, I was yeah. actually this is more of a spiritual experience for me today yeah. rather than racing. Yeah. <laughs> and then also, oh no, I had a flat tire. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing Joe Laverick said to me when I took him on the first gravel ride, he goes, oh, this is a sport that if you're having a bad day, there's a lot of good excuses. Yeah. Isn't there? <laughs> you did a gravel time trial this year. I did, and actually, I have to say, it's a horrible experience. It's yeah, like that's not a surprise at all. The way in which you take corners in a in like a TT on a gravel bike is it's like seriously almost like nuts. You're totally out of control because you're, you're trying to just hold as much speed as you can because to get the gravel bike up to speed because there's so much friction from your tires, mm. you're not very aero. It's mm. like, it's a lot of work. So like the way you corner and technically do stuff really, really, really matters. But then at the same time, it's like, it's just a totally different format for gravel. It's normally it's like a bunch race where you've got like attacks or surges and hard moments, technical parts, but all of a sudden it was just from from the line. It was like, like just get to like max. Yeah. Hold it at max. So it's road races, the kind of thing that I loved and yeah. you weren't such a fan of. No, I mean, I appreciate it. You love the a art. surge. I love the. I love you the love art. a surge. You're good at a surge. You well, love a surge. They call me Sergi, Sergi McGee. So, in, in Spain, they call him Sergey. Sergey. Not in Russia, even. <laughs> Sergio. Sergio. <laughs> Just loves it. Nathan was a very good. But yeah, I always said you're a very underrated time tri team time trialist in your day. Well, thank you, Alex. Because you loved a surge. I just loved a good... Well, a you controlled surge. surge. Yeah, yeah, obviously. But interestingly, gravel time trials is actually a lot of surges, right? Because yeah. once you actually get into a technical section, there's, there's not much pedaling to be done. It's actually, like, how do you connect the dots? How do you make sure your, your lines are all really clean? Get just enough drift to turn and twist the bike for the next corner without wiping speed. And then next thing, you're back on the pedals and you're like, you're back up to like 600, 700 watts. Like immediately, bam. Yeah. And then you've got to try to hold that until that next part. So it's an interesting format. I hope they actually have a few more of them this next yeah. year. Um, but at the same time, I hope there's not too many. <laughs> I love that. One biggest difference between gravel TTs and TTs, control the amount of drift. <laughs> before a corner. If I've drifted on a TT bike, I've had the AG 12 r shorts afterwards. <laughs> it's what we call it, it's the gravel shorts. Yes. <laughs> I've only experienced the Ridley Canzo. Thumbs up from me, but your bike, pretty. It's nice. It is pretty. It's nice. And all the Campag gear. Like, you can't deny, I mean, been a big Shimano fan throughout my career. Did five years on Campag with Movistar though. 
stunning hour record equipment that they supplied me in 2015. One thing I'll say for Campag, each year with Movistar would get a new set of training wheels and they'd last the whole Essex winter, which is salty roads, like yeah. lots of miles. That says a lot. They would not look, not look any different at the end of the winter than the start. Other wheels that I've had, I was replacing bearings every two or three weeks. A lot of people think they're like a, a group set company. <laughs> I almost think they're like a wheel company that makes group sets. Like their wheels are insane. I've had carbon road racing wheels on my gravel bike most of the season and I take some stupid risks down some crazy rocky stuff. But and you I, use them, you use them hard. I use them hard, I use them how they should be used yeah. and I haven't even had a bend, a wobble or a crack. It's just insane. So it's good stuff. Yeah. We're drawing to the end of this gravel, we are drawing to the end of this gravel day, aren't we? I mean, you are, I'm about to go do another six hours. It's actually, do you know today's the shortest day of the year? Is it? Yeah. Ah, and we squeezed in a gravel ride. Look at that. Inspirational. So I have drummed up a few quick fire gravel questions in no particular order. Gravel race, on average, how long? Too long. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say America, 200K, Europe, 140. And so how long, in terms of hourage, what's that taking? Well, the 200k is more like seven to eight hours. And in Europe, they keep them pretty short, like three to four. Tire pressures, how many of them? Not many, right. as low as you can go. If you run tire liners and tubeless, like I race at about 26 PSI. Oh. Oh. What time does a gravel race start in the morning or afternoon? Oh, it's the one thing I was not warned about. I'm up at like 4.30 smacking food into my mouth be on the start line for 5.45 for some of them. It's, it's actually, it's actually this most unenjoyable aspect of gravel racing. On the subject of food and a nerdy like, food intake, what are you, what are you taking in? How much? Well, at Unbound this year. What's the year, burn rate? What's the burn rate? At Unbound this year, I finished in 10 hours and five minutes and I burnt uh, 10,055 kilojoules. So that's a thousand an hour for 10 hours. Shit. And I did not win. <laughs> Fancy that. <laughs> uh, any kind of support en route? Well, there's moral support, you know. Right. The spirit of gravel keeps me warm at night. Does the spirit of gravel change your tire for you if it flats? <laughs> I mean, maybe we could have like different themes, you know, maybe there's the spirit of gravel, but maybe there's also like a little devil figure who's like the guy that goes and pierces your tire. <laughs> and then the sealant might actually be the angel, the angel. So I've got angels in my tires to keep my tires pumped up. Would you say the majority of gravel competitions are about competing or completing? Well, <laughs> well, here's where it's actually quite nice is, I think everyone starts off with the idea of competing. And then there's just enough excuses out on the road for things to go wrong there. Oh, you know, I'm just here to complete it today. You know, it's just, just a great, great day. It's like, it's like a fisherman who says, oh, it's not about catching fish. It's just about being out in the wild. Do you run a power meter? I do. Do you use it? Not really. The only thing I really look at it for is just to see my burn rate in terms of calories right. to make sure I'm eating enough. But it's not really relevant because it's just like if you can't keep up, you can't keep up. And seeing a bad number or a good number at that time is as disheartening as it is. It's just getting dropped. So I think the data afterwards is kind of cool to look at retrospectively, but I don't use it. I reckon that's it. I reckon that's all I got. So, oh, no, cornering. The last one, cornering. Lean the bike or lean the person? Lean the person. The worst thing you can ever do is try to tip the bike over. You, know, you actually have a lot of lot of grip if you keep the bike vertical and you're pushing against gravel that way. But as soon as you tip the bike sideways, it's just literally like skating on ice. And, and I see that's where most beginners get it wrong or people sort of converting over from road is that they really try to like tip the bike in a corner. 
But actually, the more weight that you can put on your outside foot, and the more the person can lean, keeping the bike upright, the more you can rip that corner. Follow up question after that, because it just, it got me thinking of conversations I had with motorbike riders. On the road, did you lean the bike or lean the person? Well, that's an interesting question, because I think there was a time and a place for both. Left it. A time and a place for both. Okay, there you have it. We're now riding home. What do you say, last little bit of single track? Just a little bit. Last little bit of single track. Yeah. Let's go left. And we'll stick it in my mouth. The GoPro, that is. Oh, Nathan, do a stunt. The spirit of gravel. Scooping out the poop, scooping out the speed pay. Poop, poop, this, poop, 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 this poop, why, poop. ladies and folks, one doesn't use speed pay for gravel. Dun, dun, dun. Commonly used pedaling pedal system in the gravel scheme. Same with you, say, Nathan. Oh, I probably Shimano body. Yeah, I think yeah. It came out a lot with Bruce Lee, but it did. Oh, look, first. Parent thing. Those always remind me of Rita. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna look funny in the video of me riding with a bag. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing, Nathan's been kind enough to carry the bag because I'm the novice here with a with a knee thing. Thank you, Nathan. You're, You're welcome, man. Alex. And it's on brand as well, it's an Oakley backpack. Look at that. It's on brand. That was not even intentional. It's, you know, it's gravel coloured, so some would argue that it's actually perfect. I feel like I'm actually just practicing for the next big epic races with a lot of supplies yeah. in the back. Maybe, ultra I, maybe gravel. I can do Badlands now. Does that class as ultra gravel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it took Lockie 49 hours. Oh. I think he stopped for a total of 30 minutes. Sicko. Oh. Oh. I, don't, I don't know how he does that stuff, he's amazing. Yeah. Oh. He is classed as a different breed. There's quite a few hours out on the bike in the end. I think we rolled out about 11 in the end after the traffic. Uh, Head down to Jonas Hot New Cafe. Oh yeah. Idle hands. Idle hands. Another cafe in Girona. Who would have thought it? Next thing there'll be a new bike shop. <laughs> oh wait, this one next week. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Laura. This is a fancy gravel bike. Look Alex, at you hold the key. To your heart. Look at this. Normal pedals, a lot of space for snacks. I mean, that's a big snack bag. Fork mounted bottle cages. That's to keep your wine bottles upright. Yeah. You know, because you don't want to get that cork. There's some girthy tires on there as well. Yeah, so. that's a that's a beast, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and look at the angle of the hoods. Oh, I don't know. He's either that. crashed really hard into a tree or he's got broken wrists. Did I get a good, good job there? Yeah, yeah. I crashed into a. Into I first I crashed on the ground, but like I crashed into like another cyclist the other day oh. uh, under the bridge. Okay. Like on the big cycling path, and there's this guy that comes around a van, and yeah. I like was just overtaking it like a pedestrian. 
just like smash like full on each other. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what happens when there's a lot of cyclists in one place. I guess. Yeah, too many of us. <laughs> yeah, and, and like pedestrians just walk everywhere. Yeah, where they want. And we're done. That's a, that's my first gravel ride done. That's Nathan's umpteenth gravel ride done. I've done a few now. Yeah. Scale of one to ten, how did I do? Actually, I would say ten. I've I've been with some newbies who really faltered. A few people injured themselves, so you did good. I th actually, I'd say you did very good. Coming, fr coming from a pro. I think there might be a gravel race over there. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> Thank you. Come to the dark side. The, the dark side. You will make a strong ally to the force. <laughs> the rough side. The rough side. Yeah. No, thanks for taking me along for I really, en I did really enjoy that, genuinely. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Nathan, today we also recorded a podcast, which is on Nathan's channel, called The Gravel Log. You can get that on all podcast platforms, because there's a lot of them, isn't there? Just go to your podcast place, it'll be there. Yeah, and also follow him on everything, Instagram. There's just some great stuff. Like Nathan's Hit the got thumbs up button, subscribe, <laughs> buy our merch. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nathan's got some real awesome sponsors, and you know, as... I say a lot on this channel without the sponsors none of this happens so you know props to them props to my sponsors and thanks for watching see you next time